Praise the Lord. Um, we've got a pretty good little group. There's more getting baptized than what I had known, and I'm really excited. And this baptistry is very, very clean and slippery. You can, person can fall real, real easy. So I'm going to try not to embarrass myself. But uh, we've got one that, um, that's getting changed and stuff, and we need just a couple more minutes, but we're like super close. Everybody else is ready. So we just wanted to alert everybody that we're getting close and just be patient with us. And um, I think everybody's going to be happy to see this group that's getting baptized tonight. I'm really excited. So just give us just another couple minutes and we'll be ready. Jesus said in Matthew 28, when he said, Go and baptize it in all the nations and land, follow the Son, and Holy Ghost, we just do it the way see it. Yeah. But once we start coming in, it looks like there's going to be five of us. We'll start out with the youngest, and then we'll go like to the next one up to the oldest. So uh, when Tim gets up here, um, we'll, uh, we'll ease down into the water, and uh, I'll read the scriptures, and if they ain't many, and then we'll get started. And this, this baptistry is super clean, it's a little bit slippery, so when you get out on the floor here, don't slip, don't slip, or it's a little clean. Yeah, I'm ready for it. Okay. All right, we're really excited tonight to um, have five believers that's going to be baptized, and uh, there may be somebody else here um, that needs to, and if they would want to do that, and when we get finished, I'd be happy, more than happy to wait on them if they made a decision and want to come up here and do it tonight. We always want to read the scriptures on what the Bible says, and the Bible tells us to do it and how to do it, how to pray, gives us all the details, and the first scripture that I've always read in baptizings is the scripture where Jesus Christ himself in St. Matthew 28 tells us how to baptize believers and there's no greater authority than the Son of God on anything concerning his church, especially water baptism. He says in Matthew 28, 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Um, in Mark 16 and 16, Jesus said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. John 3 and 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Romans 6, 3. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, 
who hath raised him from the dead. My final scripture, 1 Peter 3, 21. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I always like to say, I was trained by my pastor, Brother Coral, coming up many years ago, that when we do these baptizings, this is a testimony not only to us here in the congregation here at church, but this is a testimony to God and to his kingdom in heaven. And I believe they're looking down on us tonight that these believers are not ashamed of Jesus Christ and they want you and they want the world to know they've made a decision in their life who they're serving and what they're planning on doing and that's to serve the Lord. And the powerful part of the testimony to me is this is a testimony also to Satan and his kingdom in hell tonight that they don't want anything to do with him or this way of this world. And they've made a choice in their life and they've chose Jesus Christ as their personal savior. So that's some of the impressions I have as we do this tonight. We're gonna to start out with the youngest. We've got some young people tonight, uh, tonight that's gonna to do this and uh, we'll get started at this time. In obedience to the commandment of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we baptize this, our sister, who confesses Jesus to be the Christ, the Son of the living God. We baptize her in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. to the commandment of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We baptize this, our brother, who confesses Jesus to be the Christ, the Son of the living God. We baptize him in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In obedience to the commandment of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we baptize this, our sister, who confesses Jesus to be the Christ, the Son of the living God. We baptize her in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In obedience to the commandment of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we baptize this, our sister, who confesses Jesus to be the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. 
We baptize her in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. been many, many years. I've not seen it happen in recent years, but I've seen it happen years ago where we would ask if there's anybody else that's here that you've been saved, but you've not been baptized and we would be happy to do it. And there's been, there's been a few services years ago where somebody would raise their hand and we would do it. And the same, the same offer goes out tonight. And um, I don't know what you all can feel back there, but we can feel the power of God like lightning bolts up here in this baptistry tonight. Do you want to say anything, Brother Tim? I thank God. I thank God for the opportunity to be a part of this tonight. Amen. Yeah. This is all possible through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All this is is confirmation that we love our Jesus and that he died on a cross for our sins. The baptistry is open. Anybody want to take the opportunity, I, I recommend it. I remember eight years ago when I took it upon myself to, to be baptized. Man, it was a glorious feeling. Yes. The power of Amen. God is with us tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right. We give the Lord all the praise. Uh, give us a few minutes to get changed and stuff. Y'all go ahead and get started with praise and worship in church. And uh, we're excited to see what the Lord has for us tonight. At the end of the service, we're going to have these believers stand before the crowd. And you can shake hands with each one of them. So God bless you.
it's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to experience a water baptism. I tell you what, when you get saved and you get that fired up like these people and these young people has gotten and they want to be baptized, boy, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like having that first love of Jesus Christ in your life. And boy, it feels good. I tell you what, I'm like Tim or Billy. One there said, it's just like lightning. I can feel that lightning here tonight. I can feel that there's a spirit of the Lord that we can feel. And it is here tonight. Amen. And we're going to go right on to the, with the service as they get ready downstairs. And the pastor will be up here in a few minutes. And at this time, I don't know if anybody might have an uh, announcement or anything like that. I don't see Brenda to be able to give anything in for the young people. and Anybody got an announcement at this time? James, you got one? Yeah, August 7th, 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 we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Got a lot of people to pray about and, and pray for. And I know Brother Junior Mooneyham has fell and broke his leg and got pneumonia and he's in the hospital. And I know there's others that needs prayer. Andy Gary Steenbergen and, uh, and Mandy Cathers. Steve Lawson. Steve Lawson. Yes. Pastor Carl Ray, yes. Okay. Joe, let's remember Joe. Joe Sawyer's. Amen. James. All right. Let's remember this. Yes. Okay. Amen. Tammy. Okay. Remember this. Richie. All right. Amen. There'll be another. Yes. Mr. Pauline, yes. and I have an uncle that they took to Lexington today. Um, he's got some problems with his lungs. It's not looking really good, but just remember him. Amen. To be another. Brother King, you still remember those two uh, little boys that I give him prayer requests for this morning, Reed, and the other one is Riley, and remember Josh. All right. To my children and grandchildren. Yes. Amen. Yes, Steve. All right. Okay. All right, right here, sister. Okay. Amen. A lot to pray about. God's able. Pray for Steve. Anybody else? Yes. Okay. 
Amen. Sister, up back here. Amen. Remember this. Okay. Amen. Yes. Amen. Remember this. Yes, sister. Amen. Okay. Amen. Yes. Amen. Remember this. Ken. All right. Amen. All right. Yes. Okay, remember this? Amen. All right. All unspoken requests with the reason. Everybody stand with us. Let's all pray together. Dear Heavenly Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your spirit, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for these believers, Lord, that's come and got baptized here tonight, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to be with them, Lord. And as we come together, Lord, and unified in one mind and one accord here tonight, Lord, and forgetting all everything that's going out in that world, Lord, as we come together and pray, Lord, tonight, Lord, over these requests, Lord, that's been given in, Lord. All over the house, God, they was hands raised and people that was sick, Lord, that needs to be healed of their bodies, Lord. We know, Lord, that you took stripes on your body, God, for that, Lord. Lord, that the ones that need to be saved, Lord, ones that's backslid, God, we ask you to go to them right now, Jesus. Every family that is represented here today, God, we ask you to go to them, Jesus. Save their souls, heal their bodies, God, and all the unspoken requests, Lord, all the thoughts, Lord. God, we ask you, Lord, to touch them, Lord, and be with them. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Bobby, you want to come and take her offering and ties up? Praise the Lord. I'm glad to be here tonight. Amen. Um, I'm glad to see five more souls uh, in the Land's Book of Life. Yes. Um, if everybody come up, or the men will come up, we'll take the offering. If everybody stand, and we'll uh, we'll pray over it off from here. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity to be here tonight, Lord. Lord, we ask you, Jesus, to move in this service, Lord. We give it to you, Father. Lord Jesus, is there anyone else here, Lord, tonight, Lord, that does not have their name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, Father? Lord, we ask you to move and convict their heart, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask you to bless this offering. We ask you to bless the ones who have to give and who has not equally, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing page 180.
stood right by me through all my troubles. When I was gone, He didn't let me go astray. He took my sin and saved my soul. He cleaned me up and made me whole. Jesus died. been my doctor, he's been my lawyer, my God's been good to me, he's been my friend, he's been my comforter when I was lonely, and when I was going astray, he took me here. He took my sin and saved my soul. He cleaned me up and made me whole. Jesus died. He's been my comforter when I was lonely. When I was going astray, He took me in. He took my sin and saved my soul. He cleaned me up and made me whole.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to say I'm thankful tonight for uh, the Spirit of the Lord that I feel. And I don't know if you feel the excitement. Some of you might not know what you're feeling, but that's the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I'm so humbled tonight by the Spirit of the Lord. I felt it all day long. And uh, I didn't lay out this morning. I, I'm sorry I wasn't here, but I felt like I needed to be somewhere else. I was supporting my son. He preached this morning. And they were singing and ministering. And so I felt like I needed to go and watch the babies. <laughs> but, um, but I'm telling you what, God's the same wherever you're at. And I was humbled this morning by the Spirit of the Lord where I was at. Hallelujah. And I felt the anointing. Hallelujah. But I'm so glad that when I came to church tonight, it's the same anointing. Hallelujah. That I felt this morning and I feel it tonight. And I'm humbled by the presence of the Lord. And I'm humbled by the joy of the Lord that I can feel in my life. Hallelujah, because how many knows that on the outside, on the outside of our lives in turmoil? How many knows that when we walk out the door, the problems are going to still be there? Hallelujah, but I'm thankful tonight that my mom and dad, when I look back there, I didn't even know they were here. But when we come up here, I'm glad that my mom and dad has the strength to come to the house of the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. And I thank Him tonight for that. And I'm humbled by the presence of the Lord. And I don't know if I can sing this song or not because uh, I feel so much joy in my heart and my sinuses are acting up. But I'm going to try just a little bit. Somebody might have to come down and help me if anybody wants to. High on a tree that he might draw better to him. Well, the multitude began to praise him while others were trying to stop him. He said, If they hold their peace, the rocks they're gonna cry out. And here is
you. Well, the multitude began to praise him. While others were trying to stop him, he said, if they hold their peace, the rocks, they're going to cry out. And here is one. song request tonight um, for Brother Mark if he could do one of his songs. I don't know if he's got something on his heart or Amen. Okay. Yes, All, right. All right. Does anybody have a song request tonight? Yes. Amen. All right. Is is there any of our singers? Uh, Brother Harold, could you do that? Amazing Grace? Yes. Come right on. Amen. Amen. I got to sing with these two here 
couple of weeks ago, I think it was. And I just, it just made me feel so good. We got two singers and me. about it till Jan started talking to me about how serious it was <laughs> but and I'm all right there's nothing wrong but and I was happy about it and I was thankful that no cancer showed up but I couldn't be completely happy because there's so many needing a touch from the Lord, you know? And Mandy came to mind and Gary Steenbergen. Seemed like one right after another came to my mind. And, and I couldn't be happy for my health because there was a burden there for them. Rusty Goodman wrote a song many years ago called Who Am I? Who am I that a king would die for? When I think of how he came so far from glory came and dwelt among the lonely such as I to suffer shame and such disgrace on Mount Calvary take my place to an old rugged cross he would go for who am I who am I that a king would bleed and die for 
Who am I that he would pray? Not my will, thy Lord. The answer I may never know. Why he ever loved me so. But to an old rugged cross he would go for who? Am I? When I think of these words, I'll leave thee never. Just think about it. Just be true, and to you I'll give life forever. I don't know what I could have done to deserve God's only Son to fight my battles until they're won. For who am I? He would go for who am I? You know, the Lord, for I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, He gave me a glimpse of what He's getting ready to do around here don't you get tired of hearing oh 50 years ago that it was this way don't you get tired of hearing 30 years ago this happened well I'm telling you we're getting ready to experience 50 years ago and there's people who thinks I'm crazy. We are going to see miracles. We're going to see healings. We're going to see deliverance. Like we've never seen before. We got one little hurdle, just one, and Brenda's going to let me preach it in two or three weeks. One little hurdle that we've got to jump, and we're going to start seeing miracles, and we're going to start seeing healings. And this man is not going to be just the only man or person that feels it. I tell you, God is getting ready to pour down on Dorothy. The devil is doing everything he can. He's trying to do this and he's trying to do that. But I'm telling you, God is getting ready to put the devil in his place at Dorothy. And the title of my message will be, you can think about it. 
and you can meditate it. Think about it. Can you defend yourself? Can you defend yourself? We're in a battle, brother. But you got to be willing to fight. I can't preach it now. ministers, I've had a couple of preachers help us through, we was going to have a baptizing last Sunday night and had it tonight, and uh, we appreciate the help that we've got. He couldn't be here tonight, and Brother Kenny's got a message, so at this time I'd like for Brother Kenny to come up. Let's give him a good welcome. Hey man, it's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. It's good to feel his spirit. I've not always felt his spirit. And as I was sitting there and they was talking about lightning up there and started feeling their, his spirit. And I went back and, and first of all I started thinking of some titles of some messages that Billy had preached. And one come to my mind when he, they said that and you know, talking about the spirit and of the Lord and about he preached a message one time on 440, on 440 electric. On instead of just 220 or 110, and two, you know, but he felt 440. He preached a message one time that come to my remembrance, it comes to my remembrance a lot, and the title of it was Calling All Giant Killers. I'm calling all giant killers. Calling all giant killers. And then I started going back in my remembrance of what the Lord had brought me through. And, and then watching Harold and Lisa and the choir and Martin, all of us up here. And you, you know, you start, and then seeing these people getting baptized. And you start thinking about what God has brought you through. What God's done for you. How he had a plan for your life. And how, can, how, he, can, how he can do things in your life that you would never think that he could do. It, 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 it ain't like that. You go to school and, and get an education, and you and Lord, and, and I'm and the, right here's what, what I'm going to do, and what the, here's how it's going to happen in my life. And now, this is the way that I'm going to go. That ain't what happened in my life. Everything just kind of started falling together for me when I started serving the Lord. But now, when I was out in sin and went and serving the Lord and doing things, my marriage fell apart. I stayed out. My siblings stayed mad at me all the time, my brothers and sisters. My mom and dad had a business that I was, was involved in when I was 18, 20 years old. That it wouldn't, I, I, I couldn't be a part of it because I was in sin. Got married and had a couple of girls, and they're here tonight. My wife's here tonight, same. Been married 19 years. And stuff so just was, and when we first got married at first 10 years, or first seven or eight years, it just I was out in sin and it just falling apart. Didn't know what to do and how to do. If you turn your Bibles to the book of Jeremiah, chapter eighteen. We 
We're going to start at verse 1. I'm going to read down to verse 6. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheel. And the vessel that he had made of clay was married into the hand of the potter. So he said again another vessel, and seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O ye or house of Israel. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to get here in the God, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for our pastor in this church, God, and the singing and what we have felt, God. We ask you, Lord, to anoint us, anoint this piece of clay, God, once more. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. And at the... Jeremiah and the Lord gives us an example here of a little bit what I was talking about on the potter making some clay. And on how he had his hands on that wheel right in the middle of that clay. And how he had that and he was molding the potter, molding that clay. And as we start to go out through our lives and start to look back at our lives. And we, we've had a baptizing here tonight. And I don't know, some of them may have been saved for a long time. Some of them may have just got saved and wanted to get baptized. But as I started, you know, as I can remember back and go back when I got baptized, you know. And we had went to church just for back here a little while. And we decided they was having to baptize like they are tonight. And we decided out between us and they was, some of us got baptized. But as I look back through my life and think about through my life and what has went on through my life, how Jesus had a hold of my life the whole time. How Jesus has got a hold of your life the whole time. Hey, you may not know what's going to go on tomorrow. It may not want to happen next week. But honey, it don't matter what's went on and what's going to happen next week and what's going to happen tomorrow because Jesus has got a hold of your life. He is married to that wheel that that potter is on. He gave us an example. He is married. He said he was married. And we look and we, we, I've watched it on TV before. And I've seen it on TV before. How these people get down to this wheel. And they'll mold that. And that, that potter and that wheel. And it'll, it'll come up. Boy, and it'll, it'll start with some clay down here. And you know, and he, a lot of times that clay is kind of a reddish looking color. And different life looking color. And they'll have that wheel on that wheel. And he'll be a spinning that wheel. And he'll be a going. And you'll be a looking at it. And he'll start coming to form. As you go out through your life. And I could give it, and I don't know except the example to give in my own life as I start to look at that wheel and think about that wheel. Because I was a pretty good old boy up to about, I was about 18 years old, 19 years old. I was a pretty good boy. At my, I'm just going to testify just some. some at dear, but as, as I went to 7th, 8th, and 9th grade year, I played basketball and I would carry my Bible. I was actually ordained here when I was 16 years old with Billy and some of Seth and some of us. And, Bunch of us got ordained as preachers when I was 16 years old. I'm 39 years old now, so it's been a while ago. But I would go to school with my Bible, and, and I would have uh, go to my Bible, and I would have prayer meeting in the in my uh, I think it was freshman and so, no it was eighth grade year and freshman year I would have in them two years. I mean I was into it big time, and going and doing things, and the Lord was molding me and doing things in my life. And it ain't that I know how to do anything, see. It ain't that I planned on doing anything or, or it, it really had anybody pushing me to say, now here's just exactly how you would do it. And, and back then in 1993, I can remember when they started the thing at school and all the thing, it, would have said, it, said it, was, it was called See You at the Pole. And we would actually go outside in the middle at, in the morning of class before class started and we would pray around the flagpole. 
and do things in the black boat. I don't know if they do that now or not. But it ain't that I knowed how to do these things. It ain't that I knowed what I was even doing. I just thought I had an unction from the Lord and enjoyed doing it and had some people at school and some things going on that we was doing it. God had me on the potter wheel. He was doing things in my life. And as I started growing in my life and got up to 18, 19 years old, I started to stray and I started to backslide on the Lord and do things that I shouldn't be doing. But I was still on the wheel. God still loved me and kept me. Even though I started doing some things that I shouldn't be doing and, and going astray and didn't know for sure what I was doing. I was going astray and not doing what the Lord had called me to do. 19, 20, 20 years old and 21 years old, and I got married. I think it was something like that. I got married, married Stacy. She's here tonight. He went on a couple of years that we, we, we had went on a couple of years and, and we didn't have no children at first. It went on about two years and we had hope. We did. Went on another year, year, we didn't wait long. And had faith. But I was on the potter's wheel. Even though sometimes, you know, I've, I've, I've got a, a piece of porcelain a coffee. I'm a coffee drinker, and you'll get a cup, and you'll be walking out through the barn, or, or we'll be walking outside, and every once in a while, I may drop that uh, coffee cup, and the handle may break off of it. Or, I've, or, I've, or Stacy's made me a cup of coffee at four in the morning, and I'd walk out through there, and every once in a while, I may hit it against something other, uh, or climbing on the tractor or doing something other, and I may bust that piece of glass, that, that piece of, you know, it's kind of, kind of a clay type of material, bust it all to pieces. Even though I would go through my life and started doing things that I shouldn't be do, we still started having children and still started raising a family, and, and I said, God, and I started getting strung out on drugs and started doing things I shouldn't be doing. I was starting to have pieces of me break off is what I'm trying to say. I started to have a piece of me break off. But it didn't matter, honey. I can tell you right now, you may have some things in your life that may be broken and took off. You may have the handle broke off you. You may have a cup. It just broke down and just demolished and broke all into pieces. I'm telling you what, tonight, honey, tonight, you're still on the potter's wheel. You're still on the potter's wheel. It don't matter what you went through, what you've done, you're still on the potter's wheel. He said it was married right to the potter's wheel. As I went through my life and started doing these things and started doing things I didn't, shouldn't be a doing and in my life. I was still on the potter's wheel. You're still on the potter's wheel tonight. And as that, you, you know, you can kind of imagine, I want you to visionize it or vision it that on that potter wheel and him molding that and him doing things. That potter, even though Jesus Christ, he's not going to drop us. He's not going to do nothing to, to hurt us. He's not going to do anything to hurt us. But every once in a while, we might get uh, uh, away from him and do things that we shouldn't be doing and be broken. And these kids, we had these children, and we started to raise our family. And I started running from the Lord. As a preacher, I called preacher, ordained when I was 16 years old. Now I'm 22, 23, 24 years old. And started doing things that I shouldn't be doing and selling drugs and staying gone two or three weeks at a time. You could go by my place where I was living and ask my wife and back then and ask her where I was at and she couldn't answer you. She couldn't tell you where I was at. I'm not about a good boy. I'm not about a boy without no education. Without nothing, really. Except a good mommy and daddy at home and a church praying for me. And a good God. That didn't really know no direction. But started doing things he shouldn't be doing. And finally went on for, I don't know, I think it went on for like maybe seven years. That I was doing things that I shouldn't be doing. And
a backslider. On the Lord. Got caught several times with drugs and caught, caught several times with stuff. And, and finally it went on that my wife just decided it was enough that she was taking the children and leaving. And I'd got so bad in my mind, Bobby, that that didn't even, even matter to me no more. I'd got in my mind that in the natural, if you was dropping a piece of that glass or potter, a pottery, I had broken all to pieces. I was. I was broken all to pieces. But I still had a God. You've still got a God. We've still got a God. That we're still baptizing people. We're still feeling the spirit of the Lord. We're still seeing people shout and sing for the Lord. That we're still on the potter's wheel. You've not went so far that you're not Done something other than he's not got you on that potter's wheel. And I went on that lifestyle, Bobby, and finally, you know, and one night I got pulled over by the, the police and they took me to jail. I think this was maybe April of 2001. And they took me on the jail and And it gave me time to think, and which I'd been to jail several times out this seven years, but this time it was different for me. This time I'd lost everything. I had broken down and lost everything. You may think, well, now, Kenny, you don't know for sure what I've been through and what I've, what's going on in my life. I ha I've had my back one time... Um, it was when I was young, had a red spot come up my back when I was playing ball that they didn't know for sure what it was. And as I went and had it x-rayed, they said, yeah, we better check that out a little bit more. And them praying and Kim and Luana and some of them praying and Mommy and them praying and went back again and they couldn't find nothing. So I know what it's like to be healed. I know that we serve a healer. I know what it's like to be by yourself in jail or prison without nobody. I know what it's like to lose your wife and your children. I know what it's like to hate the church and to think that I'll never be back there. That I might, now I'll probably go to church one of these days, but I'll never be back to Dorothy. I know what it feels like to be like that. I know what it feels like to hate your mom and dad. Well, they're just against me. They're all against me. I'm never going to be able to do nothing. I know what it feels like to be like that. I know what it feels like to walk into a room with your wife and your children and things and you don't even recognize them because you're in such a state of mind that you come in one night and the snow on the ground and they're all around a Christmas tree and you have forgot that it was Christmas. And you wonder, well, what in the world's going on? I could keep going right on down the list of things. But the Lord still had... As Jeremiah started talking here and talking about that potter and as he gives us the example and the Lord speaking to Jeremiah telling him that I'm the potter and I've still got them on the wheel. That I'm my hands is marred right to that potter's wheel and I'm a forming you and as you break and you do things that you shouldn't be doing or going and doing things that you shouldn't, you're just broken hearted and you don't know sure what to do. You tell them that I'm, yeah, I'm right there. I've still got a calling in their life and I'm still going to do something in their life. I'm still going to make something in their life, life because I'm the one, I'm the one at the end of it that's got to say. I know what it's like to finally get on your feet and you start doing things and coming back to the church. I know what it's like to come into the church and not feel the spirit of the Lord. Because after I got out of jail that April and maybe that next year, I think it was that very next year, 
I had an uncle get cancer and die. And we decided that, which we was doing pretty good that year, and doing pretty good. We wasn't saved or nothing like that. We had not, you know, but we had started doing things and at least got our family back and started being with her family and started doing business with my dad again and had an uncle get cancer and die. He said, now, when, he said, if you don't know nothing else, Kenny, here's what I want you to do. I want you to give up those cigarettes. This has been 12, 13 years ago. I want you to give those cigarettes up, and I want you to go to church. I said, man, I'm going to do that. So I can remember coming into the church and, and sitting back here. and I don't know, it was three or four years that I sat back there and never did hardly move, never did do nothing much at all. But as the Lord still had me on the potter's wheel, and I don't mean to try to stick a finger at Kenny or nothing like that. I'm just using me as an example. And he still had me on those potter wheels. I was sitting back there and didn't feel the spirit of the Lord for a long time. But we made our minds up that we was going to the house of the Lord. That we was going to the house of the Lord. It didn't matter what else was going down. That we was going to the house of the Lord. And as we started going to the house of the Lord and started doing, and doing things and serving the Lord and started thinking about the Lord and started meditating upon the Lord and started praying again and started reading our Bible again, this has been 12, 13 years ago. We started feeling the spirit of the Lord again. The Lord started speaking to us again. He started speaking to us about paying our tithes. That was a big one for me. As I started making money and doing things for the Lord and went on through my life, I'm still talking about being on the potter's wheel. I've brought you, I've brought you and give you an example. Just to, I mean, I, Lord, I could go into some of the stuff that happened in that seven years that you can just kind of imagine. I mean, I've went to jail. I've lost my wife. I've lost my children. I've got nothing. Don't have a vehicle. Ain't got no money. Ain't got nothing. I'm not, I'm not talking about the 50 years ago. I'm talking about about 10, 12 years ago this happened. But I'm still on that potter's wheel. I'm still on that potter's wheel. I was broken and had some pieces. The, the canker worm, the devil had stole some things from me. He had took some things from me. But we started putting it back together with the Lord's help. And we started doing business and started coming to church, started meditating, started paying my tithes. I ain't preaching on tithes or nothing like that. But I just one of my callings, kind of, I think, or something like that, on giving and doing things and trying to do it without being stood out. Trying to, I mean, I mean I've been wanting to say, I've got some more stuff that when the Lord gives me time, we'll, we'll, we'll testify and preach about that. But as you go through your life and you're doing things and stuff starts happening in your life and people start asking you, boy, what would you go to school at? Where did you learn this? How did you learn how to do this? How did you do this? And, and the only time that you really look, you know, you try to act like a big shot is in maybe in front of Uncle Bill or something other. <laughs> you know, or Johnny or somebody like that, you know. And some of you don't know that. It's my uncles that's here tonight or Wayne, you know. I, oh, yeah, well, I just figured it all out. I'm being real tonight, honey. We're still on the potter's wheel. We're still right there. You may think that you're broke. You may think that they ain't a change. They may think that you ain't going to be able to do nothing. But I'm telling you what, honey, as Jeremiah told us right here in the book of Jeremiah in chapter 17, as he talks about the potter wheel, as he talks about telling us how that God has got his, he's talking about the Lord, he's giving us example, talks about how he's married, that his, his hands is married right through that potter's wheel. That he can take them off of it if he wanted to. Hey, he breathed in her nostrils, it says. Right out of the dirt. Made us right out of the dirt, boys. He knows every vein. He knows every nerve ending. He knows everything in us. 
He knows exactly the pain that we feel. He knows exactly the sadness and the joy that we feel. He made us. He molded us. He put us together. He knows every hair on your head tonight. And stuff in your life, it just, as you start doing things for the Lord and, and stuff, and I'm sure James could testify right now how stuff just starts falling in place. And you're not used to stuff falling in place. And stuff just starts falling in place. And since stuff starts just falling in place, and it's just like my natural daddy or my natural mommy in the natural, how they love me and how, they lo how your mom and dad loves you or how your grandparents love you or how somebody that's over you loves you or how you love your kids. How you love your kids on how much you would do for them. How much that you would go and be with them. And how much Jesus or the Father in heaven loves us. As it starts coming together, Bobby. For you. I'd say every one of us could testify tonight how stuff starts coming together. Or we could testify on how Stuff just was fell off to part. But we could give examples of what we was doing in our lives on when stuff was together. And we could give examples in our lives what we were doing when stuff was fell all apart. And it'd be real easy for us. And sometimes we wonder. And I'm not talking about everything easy, boys. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about, I, I'm, I'm raising two teenage girls right now. He's blessed me with two teenage girls right now, and I'm, I'm raising them. I went into a full-time job. I had to give the business almost away. <laughs> but how it falls in a place, though, out through your life, and you're doing things, and, do, and I'm not trying to brag on myself. Lord have mercy. But stuff starts falling, and you're doing things, and stuff just fall, comes together. But as me and my wife was talking today on one thing, and I know money and stuff ain't everything, and I don't mean to be so about money. And sometimes I feel like, more it's money, 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 money on me when, you're, when I'm talking, and it ain't. But I do, I feel like, boys, I, I can take 10 cents and pay it on a dollar, which is 10% is what the Lord wants. And that 90 cents. We can eat all week on it. It's just unreal how it will go. And unreal how the Lord will bless it. Or if it's $100 on $10. Or $1,000 on $100. Or $10,000 on $1,000. Or $100,000 on $10,000. It don't matter. Or if it's back to that dollar. But with all the stuff that we went through and all the turmoil that we've been through, there's peace knowing that if I fall tomorrow and break my handle off of my cup, if I fall tomorrow, and honey, I will and I have, that there's peace about being with the Lord, knowing that he's got me on that wheel. Knowing that he's got me right there on that potter's wheel. And put me and pick me right back up again. Like some of these people has made their minds up tonight. Say, boys, I've, I've saved, I've been saved. I believe that God died on that cross in the third day that he rose. And I believe now I want to be baptized. 
that he'll put your life right to, back together. I can remember, I mean, we went two years without having any children. We started thinking, Lord, we wouldn't want to be able to have no kids. I can remember thinking that after we got married. I can remember thinking, boy, I'm not going to get married. I can remember thinking, well, I'm not going to feel the Spirit of the Lord. I'd sit back there three or four months. I'm not. I've done too much. I've went too far. Yeah, I believe in him, and I love him, and I know he loves me. But, yeah, he's not going to let me feel him again. He's not going to do it again. But tonight, right now, I feel, I feel the Spirit of the Lord. I feel the Spirit of the Lord in this place tonight. And as in the book of Romans, Paul gives us an example. And he's talking to Israel on being grafted in. He gives us an example on people being grafted in, meaning that people that's out there in this world that's going to be grafted in to the church. As he gives us that example, and we backslide on the Lord, and one of my favorite scriptures on that, because I was once a backslider and didn't know that I'd ever going to be able to spirit the, feel the Spirit of the Lord again. And it goes on, he gives us an example on being grafted in and about the branches falling off and about not getting mad and thinking and getting all uh, jealous and thinking that he, that he may tear off people in the church that, where we could be moved in. And where we could be moved in and doing things. And Lord, now I'm not going to be able to do this and do that because somebody's moved into my position doing that. He gives an example on the branches and things like that. But he says there's enough room for all of us to be grafted in. And there's enough work and there's enough harvest out there for all of us to be grafted in. But my favorite scripture is, is when he gets down through there and he talks about how the first fruits, if it be holy, and if the branches are holy, meaning, and what you do is holy, and the, what you do first for the Lord is holy, then also the root be holy. And as a backslider, he gets down there and he talks about how it don't matter if we've fell and broken all two pieces like I was, that he will graft us in again. Meaning that he will hear our cry again. Everybody stand with us. O house of Israel, can I not do with you as the potter saith the Lord, Behold, as the clay in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine. So are ye in mine. If they be one here tonight, as they come to the music, that's never felt the Spirit of the Lord. That's not felt the Spirit of the Lord here tonight as we, as they sing these songs and we had this baptized and as the pastor was speaking and that vote of power and as Tim was speaking, that vote of power that was coming out of that baptistry as these folks got baptized. If you were not able to feel that, maybe have never felt it, or have felt it but are lukewarm on the Lord 
I'm telling you tonight that you're still right there on that potter's wheel. And he is able to graft you in again. He's able to take you if you have fell and broke your cup or you're not able to pick it up and glue it together and fix that cup back. I have fixed, I have picked up, I've, I've got a coffee cup, one of my favorite ones before especially, and, and I would pick it up, maybe the handle would break off of it or something or other, and I'd pick it up and take it in the house and, and I would glue it back on there and try my best to fix it. But every once in a while, they'd be one break. The boy, they, I just, they, they just ain't no fixing that. I'm telling you what, honey, there's a God tonight that can fix it. Come right now. I'm telling you what, come right now. If you're here tonight and you think that you went too far, that devil's lied to you and said, no, you went too far. You can't do this. You're not nothing. You're never going to be nothing. You're not called no more. You're not chosen no more. That wasn't the Lord. You didn't feel the Lord. I'm telling you what, honey, the devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. And he's right from hell. He's right from the pits of hell, the devil is. And that's his place, not yours. Your place is in heaven with God and Jesus sitting on the right hand of the Father. Him making intercessions for me and you right now as he knows your situation. And he's able to put it back together. Now that was 2001. This is 2016, Bobby. What's that been, 15 years ago? It's took me 15 years to get right here to where I'm at today. It took me three or four months before I ever could feel the Spirit of the Lord. I'm not saying, you, you, I'm not saying it has to take you three or four months to feel the Spirit of the Lord. You may feel the Spirit of the Lord right now, but I'm asking you to come. I'm asking you to come right now. We're going to pray with you. Step out right now. And we'll believe with you. If you're backslid on the Lord or lukewarm or if you just need a healing in your body, come right now. Step out right now and come. Church, we're still on the potter's wheel. We're still on the potter's wheel. He's still molding me. He's still molding you. And he's got plans for us, like Brother Suffrage was talking about. He's got his plan for Dorothy Pentecostal Church. Boy, I feel it strong tonight. I feel it strong. Come right now, church, and let's pray around this altar. Amen. <laughs> He does.